Steve with MSpec Performance, and this is Tech Talk Tuesday. Um, as we talked about last week, we touched on power distribution modules, or PDMs, and how we would be talking about them this week. So here we are. Uh, we are actually out in the shop today because our PDMs are in cars. So we're gonna go through a rundown with that. I guess first, let's start with showing you maybe something you might be a little more familiar with, with relays. Um, some of, a lot of people have these arc panels. We'll go ahead and move on over here. All right, so a lot of you might be familiar with these arc panels. They were pretty tricky well, a few years ago. They still work good, but um, you know, you have your switches, turn everything on and off, and then traditional relays, pull one of these out. You know, a lot of people are familiar with this. You have fuses for protection, and you know, I, th I believe that the arc panel in terms of you know wiring and simplification and stuff was, was a good step ahead of everybody um, but again these are still you know they're protected by fuses and you have traditional relays that turn everything on and off so failure point failure point failure point failure point you know and if any of you have done severe racing with any of these you'll know that the relays do work their way out sometimes sometimes the ribbon cable does get cut and can cause you some problems and so that's that's what a lot of you might be familiar with back over to our pro car and we'll go through the power distribution model we're going to take a look at the motec one today we'll go through how that works some of the features of it some of the programming um, that has to be done you know it's it's a little labor intensive but um, we'll go over some of that stuff and yeah hopefully educate you guys on power distribution modules. So with the power distribution modules, it really, it's it's a pretty simple setup, which makes them awesome. There's really only two components to them. You have your main control box, which is on this car is mounted down underneath, and your switch panel. Uh, this, is, this is a CAN keyboard and user definable. They all come blank like this. You actually put the stickers on, you tell it what to do. You put the sticker or the button orientation what you want. Um, you can get multiple there you can get different keypad amounts. I think there's like a four, a six, an eight, a 12, and a 16 button for MoTeC, and then uh, ECU Masters, which is the other PDM that I'm familiar with and we use is, um, I think it's a four and an eight. I might be wrong on that, but anyway, there's a, only the two components to it. Wiring it is pretty simple. Um, you, you have a main power in from your battery, which is going to output to every 12 volt item uh, on the car that you have cooling fans, fuel pumps, ignition coils, ECUs. We even have our lockout for our uh, sequential transmission. You can hear it clicking, but that's, that's running through the PDM. We use that to control everything. PDM is completely solid state. So there's no fuses, there's no relays, there's nothing to burn out, short out, cause you problems. It has data logging it has error reporting and if you do short something it shuts that circuit down and we'll get into that I'll show you guys some stuff with uh, with the laptop and the programming and and kind of how it works uh, I'm not going to short anything out but uh, it, it will shut that circuit down and then you can reset it you can bring it back in you can tell it to try it x amount of times you can try tell it to try indefinitely you can set amperage thresholds so as an example let's say you have your fuel injectors on a eight amp circuit and you know that good healthy set of fuel injectors draws four amps. You can set the threshold to be say five amps. This, this is just sacred numbers. Set it to be five amps and everything under healthy operating conditions runs at four amps and suddenly you are now drawing five amps on your injector circuit. That can be an indicator that maybe you've got an issue going on with the fuel injector. Um, same cooling fans, computers, anything like that. I mean, that it's all user definable. Unfortunately, there's no book out there that says, "Hey, this is this is what it is." So this is what you should do. You just have to figure it out based on your setup, your wiring. But more importantly, the thermal protection, the lack of moving parts, lack of parts to wear out. That is why a lot of a lot of the racing world is going towards power distribution modules. I don't really believe it's anything new. You know, cars have been using body control modules for for years just finally have found a way to do it in the racing world and make it accessible to everybody. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the programming, some of the setup that you have to do. 
and give you a real world kind of rundown on, on when we trigger a cooling fan, what we see and what we can look at with data logging. All right, so with MoTeC, as with, well, any of them, ECU masters, uh, all of this is blank when you first open up. You have to do all of the programming. It's like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty labor intensive to do, to program these. All these options on the right hand side, this is for this car and this, all of these have been individually programmed in. I have typed every bit of that in here and programmed it on this car to make everything work. We have bottle heaters, you know, this is some of our computer stuff. This is alternator power outputs, coil packs, cool suit, lights, flashers, turn signals. It's yeah, there's a lot of stuff that, that goes into it. Your options when you program, right? So you'll, you'll pick uh, an output pin number, you know, A3, we have them, we have them married together. So one of the neat things you can do is say eight amps is not enough for the circuits you need to run. You can actually run as long as they match, as long as the amperage matches, you can actually gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't matter as many channels as you need together and just add it together. So, you know, if you have two of them, it'd be a 16 amp circuit. Um, same with the 20 amp, as long as the amp rating matches, you can marry any two of them together. So for instance, our fans overdraws a single 20 amp current or 20 amp circuit. So we run three 20 amp circuits for our rear cooling fans. And you go in and you'll assign what your pin is, you know, the maximum current. This is the retries and I have for the cooling fans, it's always retry. So if it over amperage the circuit, it won't damage anything. It'll just the PDM knows to just keep retrying that 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 output indefinitely hopefully we can just make it through a run if we are having a problem with something the thought with that being let's just get through the run figure it out after the run um, it won't damage anything it just keeps it'll it'll overdraw it shut it down turn it back on overdraw it shut it down turn it back on wash rinse repeat right so conditions you have to program all of these in we have it set up to use with a button as well as engine operating temperature so last week I spoke to you about uh, the CAN network, how everything communicates on CAN, and I, we've, we've definitely touched on this in some of the other Tech Talk videos. A lot of CAN in this car. So we actually go onto the CAN network from Pro EFI, as well as our M-Cell master switch, and we assign all of this CAN information so that we can find what we need on the power distribution module and use it to operate something out of the power distribution module. So we have engine coolant temperature, all of our stages of nitrous. I showed you that last week with the, with the digital dash. So the computer turns on nitrous stage one. Over the CAN network displays nitrous stage one on the dash, then outputs to the power distribution module and tells the power distribution module to turn on the bottle heaters. So then we have bottle pressure that we have to monitor. And that is also part of, we'll go to our bottle heaters. We have two bottle heaters on this car. So we have conditions. So we have to have nitrous stage one armed and true. We have to have and bottle pressure within a range and a high, we have a high and a low bottle pressure that has to be within that window for the bottle heaters to work. So if we go to, monitoring on the PDM, we are now currently monitoring live exactly what's going on in the PDM. As an example, I will show you how this works. So nitrous pressure is on. Stage one is armed and our bottle heaters just turned on. We are now warming up the two nitrous bottles in the car. Fans. You can see all of the, all of the fan channels turn on. And this is, this is our amperage draw. So I'll turn off that first fan. These are our main cooling fans. You can see what, it, what the amperage draw is coming across and what the load that it's pulling. So each one of those channels, rear fan one, two, and three, they're pulling approximately eight amps a piece. As our battery voltage goes down, that current draw will go up. So it's, you know, that's everything is, is doing what it's supposed to do. 
all the all the data you need from the PDM is displayed right here. It's got every channel that you program. Tells you you know if it's off, it's active. The current draw, the percent load from the PDM. You can view PDM battery voltage, temperature, your total current. This car runs about after it started and running is runs about 75 amps continuous. Another neat feature with these PDMs is you can actually tie multiple PDMs together and multiple keyboards together and have, I believe Casey said it was four keyboards run two different PDMs and any combination of functions. You know, I'm, this looks like a lot over here, but we're only using 24% of the operations that this PDM can, can, can actually do. We're using 47 of 200 operations. So there's a lot that you can do. Uh, we have our, our master kill switch, this M cell. We have our master kill switches on the CAN network with error reporting built in or programmed into it. So if we have a situation um, that we short something in the back, we can actually see what the, see what the error was, what caused the M cell to shut down or, or shut the car down. That kill switch also has a uh, G meter in it that in, in the event of an accident, it will disconnect power. Um, I believe that is programmable as well to change the G force that you need to trigger that, that kill. But just some, some neat functions that modern technology is affording us with race cars these days. So we've talked about CAN inputs, you know, going on the CAN network using engine parameters as well as, you know, the outputs and stuff. You, you still can wire these in a more traditional way. The traditional way being using an analog input, so an actual switch. We chose to use data um, to, to, to control everything. Number one, it's there, so why not? Number two, challenge ourselves, right? Learn something new. And number three it's you know if, if, if that network goes down then everything goes down so simplification name of the game some things we still do have you know a, an analog i was telling you the lockout for the sequential transmission um, that guy is on that guy uses an analog input so we actually send a trigger in from the shifter to the pdm the pdm then outputs to the lockout and releases it but if you were just to wire this, if you didn't know anything about CAN, um, just wanted to get something up and running, you, you do have 16 on this PDM, you have 16 analog inputs. So a more traditional way that you would wire, let's say your cooling fans in the past, right? So you'd have your computer that's monitoring coolant temperature. Then you would use a low side output from your computer to operate a relay. And the relay would turn on your cooling fan. You can still make this work that way you can just run your low side output into an analog input and assign it as a cooling fan and then have the PDM output and turn on the fan. Nice thing is you don't have any relay. So you have your, your main power come into the power distribution module. You have your low side from your computer and then you have your power output just runs directly, directly to the fan. So it simplifies things that way. So the, you could, if you did any one of these power distribution modules that are available today, they're gonna have a list of analog inputs. Where you're limited is you only have 16, so if there's additional inputs that you want, you'd either have to stack another PDM or you'd need to get into the CAN network and figure out how to make all of that work. Programming setup, um, I'm gonna say, if you were to ask me on what level this is, I'm gonna say five out of five. <laughs> It's pretty in depth. Uh, you need to have a, a, a decent understanding of, of 12 volt chassis wiring, um, you know, understanding how to program conditions. We learned it with, with, this, with this PDM and it was, it was a little, a little time consuming. Um, definitely had a couple of things that we thought through in one way and then realized was another way, but it's, they're, they're challenging, they're challenging. It's not, not to scare anybody away, but they are definitely challenging to program and, and, and make them work exactly how you want them to do. But, you know, like we talked about in other videos, keep pushing, right? To figure out new stuff. Again, thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, hit like, subscribe. If you have any questions, if there's anything you would like to learn about, anything at all, put it in the comments and we can get into it. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day.